Ezekiel chapter number 7. Continuing on. Moreover, after chapter 6, after chapter 5, still chapter 7. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also thou son of man, thus saith the Lord God, unto the land of Israel. Now we just preached in the mountains, the valleys, and the hills. Now we're preaching to the land. And then, the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee. I will send my anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thy abominations. So the land of Judah, the land of Jerusalem is full of abominations. Read Isaiah and Ezekiel to find what those abominations are and match them to the United States of America and see where God feels with America. And my eye shall not spare thee. That's God speaking. Neither will I have pity. That's God speaking. But I will recompense thy ways upon thee. And thy abomination shall be in the midst of thee. In the midst of thee would be Jerusalem. The temple. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Uh oh. Got some trouble coming. Trouble's happening. Thus saith the Lord God, and evil, and only evil, behold, is come. Evil is the result of sin. So the land and the people have sinned. And end is come. The end is come. It watches for thee. Behold, it is come. Lamentations. Remember, Ezekiel is right before Lamentations, before the third and final fall of the city and the, uh, I was going to say county, but the region of, of Judah. The morning has come unto thee. That would be a second advent reference. O thou that dwellest in the land, Jew. The time is come. The day of trouble is near. The time of Jacob's trouble will be the tribulation. And not the sounding again of the mountain. Last chapter, chapter 6. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee. Now Ezekiel is taken between the first and second uh, captivity. The first or second time that Babylon is coming in. But we know for sure Babylon comes three times. God says shortly. Check out the dates and the years on that shortly. God's time is not as our time. And accomplish my anger upon thee. What is the anger? Read Lamentations. And I will judge thee according to thy way. And will recompense thee for all thy abominations. And we've been reading them through Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Just seven chapters. And my eye shall not spare. And I said it again. Verily, verily. Neither will I have pity. That's repeated. I will re recompense thee according to thy ways and thy abominations that are in the midst. When God repeats something, especially when he repeats it in the same chapter, in the same voice, you're in trouble. When Jesus speaks verily, verily, that, that first verily, uh huh? That second verily, okay, I'll listen. You know, there's something about feeding, there's something about feeding the 5,000. That is mentioned in all the Gospels. Not the birthday of Jesus. That's only once. The death, burial, and resurrection are in all four Gospels. Well, what do you think God puts his credit to more? The birth or the Gospel? Uh, behold, it's come. Verse 9. And my eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity again. I will re recompense thee according to thy ways and thy abominations that are in the midst of thee. And ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. Is that how you want to know God? Do you really want to believe the holy God at the point he says, Depart from me, I never knew you? Oh, I just don't believe in God. Do you really want to trust your, your eternal faith? Don't you just want to give a little ounce of just what if, 
the Bible and God is right. You know what God can do with that little amount of faith? To say, you know what? I really don't believe, but if it is true. And then what did Jesus say with, with, as a faith of a mustard seed? You can go into the Bible and say, you know what? There's no God. And you can read the Bible and say, you know what? There's something about this Lord. There's something about this God. He's angry about something. And this God demands something. And as you read, and if you are open your heart and say, you know what? This God demands something of me. Where do you think that that root will grow? According to Romans 10, 9 and verse 10. You just read a book. Really? You know, Jeremiah and Ezekiel has happened historically. And as we're reading these two books, and I've read Jeremiah and studied it right, it has happened before it happened. Who can you find can do that? 48 prophecies about one man. And everything he accomplished comes to be 100%. Listen, if God is right and the Bible is right, you're reading something about a very angry God. And you don't want to get to know that God when your final day of judgment is standing. Behold the day. Behold it is come. The morning is gone for second advent reference. The rod has blossomed. Well, the rod that blossomed was Aaron's rod. The first high priest. It brought forth almonds. So study almonds. Pride has budded it. Uh oh. I'll say it from Genesis 1. Now you can go back to all these recordings. I don't know how many recordings we've done to Ezekiel 7 and all the extra topical messages I've done. And I have never said and never will say pride and proud are of God because they are not. You know why Ezekiel's writing after the first, maybe second captivity? Why there's going to be a third and final? As we've already read, the end has come. Because the Jews are in pride. And pride is what will cause the third and final captivity. What did Pilate say about the Pharisees and all them with Jesus? He knew for envy. Pride. Where is America going to fall? In her pride. What is the sin or one of the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, men with men. No, you're wrong. One of them was pride. I believe we're going to find that in Ezekiel. And there's one place where, where a prideful nation does repent. But pretty much when you are in proudness and you are in pride, you are in a lost cause. But there is hope. Violence is risen up into a rod of wickedness. I'm trying to find a note here. Uh, Numbers 17, 2 and 8 and Isaiah 10, 15 and 5. God is going to get the rod. Violence. Rod. What do you think the television set's going to get? One of the classification of movies and television is violence. None of them shall remain. Aren't you glad that you found this even in the Old Testament? You know that I don't know if I'm going to know my wife in heaven. I don't know if I'm going to know my children in heaven. But I, I know one thing of assuredness what I just read. Whether I know my wife or my children or not, when I walk the streets of New Jerusalem, I don't have to worry about any more violence. 
My wife has had things in her life that it's not going to be there no more. My daughter's had things in her life that's not going to be there no more. Now, whether I know them or whether they know me, guess what? They're safe and secure in the arms of Jesus in his palace called New Jerusalem. Is that, is that really, wouldn't that be a great, all right, but, oh, there's no hell. Wouldn't be the fact that you can go to a place where there's no violence. Well, we're going to do it ourselves. We're going to, really, you've done a lot of work so far, so good. You've gone from throwing a stone or stick, whatever, killing Abel to uh, missiles and drones that don't even need to be man-operated to kill people. Good job. None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude. That's a bunch of people doing it. Nor of any of theirs. That's implying, I would assume, and I'm assuming here, that the people are doing the violence. The multitude of the people are the violence, and any of theirs, that's their, I would assume, their children, their family, their friends. Neither shall there be wailing for them. I wonder if anybody cried for Adolf Hitler when he died. But when you cast him off, unless he got saved, if he didn't get saved, when God cast him off to the lake of fire, anybody involved in violence today, you know, they may have got the movies, they may have gotten the television news with all the riots and all the rape and all the stuff. And violence they do. They may get all the time on television. But you know what? There's going to be no tears shed for them at the great white throne judgment. For their crime. Now a mother may shed a tear because they're lost. But when their, their charges are read out and what they've done. The time has come. The day draweth near. Almost the morning. That would be the tribulation period. I'm trying to do this as Ezekiel's time, and I'm also doing this as pathetic time. Let not the buyer rejoice. Okay. Nor the seller mourn. Now let them let not the buyer rejoice. Look what I got. Yay, and the seller mourn. Oh, I got you. Usually the seller would be the happy one because he's he sold he sold the thing for a profit. And Proverbs speaks about something uh, boast not something that you get you know uh, you, you whittle someone down on a deal and then you go off there hey look how much I got this thing for and blah 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 it's the same thing here. A seller would be happy if he sold something. Kind of switch here. The buyer got a great deal than what the seller wanted it for. For wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. And I got Proverbs 20, verse 14. I hope that's the reference that, that shows that. Proverbs 20, verse 14. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold. Not going to get it back. Although they were yet alive. That's kind of weird. Now, I don't have all the answers to the Bible. For the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof. We're talking about a whole bunch of people that are involved in violence. That the guy who bought something is happy and the guy who, who sold it is not happy. And he's not going to go back and get it. Which shall not return, neither shall any... Strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. You got something there? Praise the Lord. They have blown with the trumpet. 1 Corinthians 14 8. Even to make all ready. But none goeth to battle. Trumpet calls. The military, the cavalry into action, and they blow the trumpet, and no soldier comes. There are places where they have uh, air raid 
weather, whatever conditions are in that area. They blow those air horns. And everybody says, oh, well, it's just another test. Who cares? I wish they shut those things up. And you find out, you know what? It's, it's a real warning. But you don't do nothing. But none goeth to the battle, for my wrath, that's God's wrath, is upon all the multitude thereof. And we've seen multitude of violence of the people, verse 11. We've seen the multitude in verse 12. We've seen the multitude of verse 13. He's, one thing is common here is he's talking about the people and their sins and violence. They are killing the prophets. They are putting Jeremiah in prison. They are punching him. Pretty soon they're going to be killing people to eat them. Wouldn't you consider that a violence? No. My body. My right. Okay. The sword is without. That means it's, it's outside the city walls. It's all around. And the pestilence. And the famine, isn't that what Jeremiah was preaching? Revelation 6, 4, and 5. Within. The army's outside the gates. He's out, and then guess what's in the gates? Pestilence and famine. You're getting diseases. Europe was like that for a time. Man, there's armies and battles fighting all around, and in the cities there was pestilence, the black plague, and famine. Filthy water, no food. He that is in the field shall die with the sword. So it looks like the fields were outside the city get walls. And he that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour him. So you're going to get diseases that's going to carry on and carry over. You're going to go to the farm boy out there outside the gates. Hey, give me some corn. Give me some. I ain't got it. But they that escape of them shall escape. Now, there's going to be some that are going to escape. Ezekiel's one of them. And shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys. You ever hear a dove? You ever just sit... I hear a dove off of you, that, that, that wilding cry that it has. I'm all alone. Where's my mate? All of them mourning. Everyone for his iniquity. All hands shall be feeble. Shaking. Unable to be used can't pick up a weapon. You can't pick up a plow. You can't pick up a cup to drink. And all knees shall be weak as water, unable to stand. Read Lamentations. Jeremiah tells us that the children are walking down the street falling for hunger. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth. You're getting close to a real itchy kind of thing and look where we are, but they're not doing it for God. Maybe doing it for their other gods. And horror shall cover them. So see the sackcloth is not to God. You think if these people were truly repenting and getting right, you think God would keep on God was telling Ezekiel, God is telling Jeremiah, if you only turn to me and do right. And shame shall be upon all faces. And baldness upon all their heads. We read about that baldness for death in Jeremiah. If you were to take that in a future prophecy event, maybe it's the... The cancers and the chemotherapy treatments. But there, here in the passage, Ezekiel 7, the sackcloth and the baldness is for the dead. It's not for God. They were worshiping the dead, according to Jeremiah. They shall cast their silver in the streets. 
Yeah, the Babylonians will pick it up. Their gold shall be removed by the Babylonians. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. Uh, Proverbs 11.4 and Zephaniah 1.18 Here, Mr. Military Man, here's all my stuff. Will you let me go? No. I've been ordered by my military, by my commander, to kill you. And one day you'll stand before God, you'll have no gold or silver. Because it's God. <coughs> the wrath of the, of the Lord. So it says, verse 18, They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror, and horror shall cover them, and shame shall be upon all faces, and baldness upon their heads. They shall cast their silver in the street, their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath. They're not repenting to God in the sackcloth. They're still, they're still worshiping the dead, and they're still worshiping the false gods. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowls, because it is a stumbling block of their iniquity. They're still in their iniquity. As for the beauty of his ornament, he set it in majesty. But they made the images. We had a whole bunch of idols in chapter 6. Now we're moving to images. Of their abominations and their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them. They're worshiping pictures now. And detestable things. And I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey. Here, take their images, will you? You know what one of the things that Adolf Hitler was doing? I don't know years, 1900s, I know that. And there's Stu finding today, he was stealing artwork. And they'll find secret vaults or secret places. And they'll find all this work and museum stuff that he stole. You know, how do you worship an image? Well, see that painting on the wall up there? I'll pay five million dollars for that just to have that pain because of a crooked smile or because you know it's abstract or obstruct, however you want to do it. I'll give all the money for that painting, but never mind a missionary, never mind the church, never mind anything of God or the word. I've got to have that poster of that female. I've got to have that poster of that male, of that entertainment, of that sport. Because he's my hero. Oh, I've got every card of that team. I just need this one more guy's card, and I've got the whole team. Oh, I'll do anything to get that one card. Those are all images. Wait a minute. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I may be wrong. Sometimes I am. But on 1s, 5s, 10s, 20s, 50s, 100s, pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, half dollars, even a $2 bill, don't they have images on them? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, aren't they images of dead men? Doesn't the Bible say the love of money? Oh, I just love Benjamin Franklin's and Thomas Jefferson's. Meanwhile, George Washington is the one that hangs out in the church collection plate all the time. You take Abraham Lincoln and you throw him into a wishing well. Is, is that what that is? Hmm? I thought, maybe. I could be wrong. Oh, where was I? Beauty ornament. And I will give it unto them the hands of the strangers for a prey, and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. What's that? The gold, the ornaments, the silver. 
Well, how are they going to pollute it? Wasn't it God's? Now it's going to sit. Well, what did Belshazzar do with God's gold and silver? He had a party and worshipped the gods of gold, the gods of silver, the gods of wood. And that was the last straw for Babylon. You know, whatever whatever bill you put in the collection plate, well, however you are a Christian, do you know where that money came from? And, do you, and outside the church, I'm not speaking of the church, but you know where that money may end up? You know the most filthy thing they say is money? That money could have been in you don't know whose hands or who know what a tensile. Make a chain. By the way, verse 22 could be also the most hot, holy place. Make a chain. I know something about a chain in Revelation. Make a chain. For the land is full of bloody crimes. We're now seeing murder. Oh, the murder rate in America. It's in Judah. It's in Jerusalem. Jesus, we read today in the Gospel of Luke, you were killing the prophets and your fathers were building the graveyards for them. America in 2015 is in the same spot of Judah and Jerusalem in B.C. 594. And America's worse because we have 66 of the books of the Bible. Israel had the law and a few prophet books. They didn't have it all. They didn't even have the Gospels when Jesus was alive and in their town. Do you realize that? The Gospels and the Epistles came long after Jesus. You know, Jesus didn't have a complete Bible, and yet we do. He says, my word, I mean, heaven and earth shall pass away, and my word shall never pass away. You know, there's more to come. And the city is full of, there's that violence again. Ezekiel chapter 7 is the violent chapter. So in every movie you're going to have violence, run the scroll of Ezekiel 7 and see what God has to say about it. How do you want to prevent your young Americans today to prevent violence? Study the Bible and open up the Ezekiel chapter 7 as a course in the schools about violence. This is what the God Almighty, the God that you'll have to go in a courtroom and put your hand on his word if you serve God and did right. And say, I, I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. That God you're going to swear, if you stand before a judge for a violent act, you better believe that God is angry with you. If you're going to teach the children right. But you can't have thou shalt not kill in the courthouse because thou offend the violent person. So you're not going to solve crime. And this, this thing today, I already said today, you know, these slogans come out, don't text and drive. They're not going to listen to you because they haven't listened to don't drink and drive. It's so stupid. Alcohol companies will put on their product, don't drink and drive, as much as a telephone company will tell you, don't text and drive. Why don't you just shut your products down? Why don't you pour it in the sewer? That's how you can stop DUI. Take the phones and destroy them in the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. They don't have to worry about people texting. Have no more texting. Get rid of the sin. No, we can't do that. We get tax dollars from them. And we support our country by tax dollars of sin. That's exactly what's going on in Judah. Have we read about the buyer and the, and the seller in the context of chapter 7? Do you think maybe that violence is being sold? I need a, I need a nice light weapon so I can kill my neighbor. Well, we got a perfect one right here. And you don't even need a license. And you can... Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. 
Wherefore, I will bring the worst of the heathen. <laughs> Not only is he going to bring the, just the military men, God just said, before the third captivity, God says, I'm going to bring the worst. People who are going to ravish and ripping women in pieces. People are going to ravish to rape a woman before he kills her. A person who's going to ravish and find an old man in the street and completely out of Hitler showed the worst of the heathen. His Nazi troops showed the worst of the heathen. You better believe the Antichrist is going to be even worse. If that's a word. They're making 45 new words a year, I, I read the other day. Worses. Add that one to the dictionary. A lot better than dot com. Well, I'm going to look up dot com. Do I look up under D or do I look under a period or what? And they shall possess their houses in the land. I will also make the pomp as someone, you know, look who I am. Oh, I'm the Holy Father. Look at my clothes. Look at the little shirt I got on backwards. Look who I am. I'm the president. Look at my vehicle that I get to travel in. Look at me. I'm the king. Look at my rings. Look at my throne. Oh, let's have a possession. Let's honor this guy, this big wig. Oh, let's make a big deal for this person. Let's have a homecoming parade for the homecoming team. Let's make a big stink. It should be... Ah, uh, the word should be, I will make also, I, I will also make the poop of the strong disease. Because you smell like poop. You look like poop. You add like poop. That's someone, you put a big show on. That was happening when uh, Paul was, uh, I forget which one, I think it was Felix in, in Acts. And he put a big pump for this guy to come up. To try Paul in prison, who was innocent. Poop. And their holy places, places. God had one holy place. Does that tell you something? He had a he had the holy place and the most holy place. It wasn't called Essence. They had churches all over the place. Shall be defiled. You know, they're gonna walk in his, they're gonna walk in a synagogue and cook some bacon and some pork on their altars. I think Malachi said I wanted the prophets say that they were already doing that, the Jews. They were actually eating pork. Which is a violation of the law. Destruction cometh. It already happened for Ezekiel, and Ezekiel saying it's coming more. And they shall seek peace. And there shall be none. Great preacher Ezekiel. You think he had the love of everybody? Mischief shall come upon mischief. Oh, look at that. You get more and more. And rumor shall be upon rumor. Uh, Baptist church there. You're going to get a rumor. Someone's going to add to the rumor. Which is going to be add to the rumor. To add to the rumor. You get a complete rumor. Which was never to start right in the first place. They shall... Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet. Come on, uh, come on, Jeremiah. Tell us what God, what God tells you that we will really do. And God told him what to do. No, that's not you. That was that was you and uh, Baruch. You want you want to deceive us and all that. Come on, Jesus, give us a sign from heaven. Come on, preacher man. Where's all the people following you? Where's the crowds around you preaching that word? Give us a sign. Give us a vision. Give us something we can see. Faith is the substance of, th of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, uh, Romans. Faith cometh by hearing. But, they, but the law shall perish from the priest. That was his job. And counsel from the ancient. The old people are not going not to be able to help. The priests are not going to be able to help. The king, so Ezekiel, is writing, and there's still a king in Jerusalem. Lamentations, that was it. There are no more kings. Shall mourn. And the prince shall be clothed with desolation. 
and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. I will do unto them after their way, and according to their deserts, get your just deserts. Comes from the Bible. Will I judge them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Psalms 28, verse 4. It doesn't end happy. Why doesn't this chapter end happy? Because no one repents and gets right. They continue with their pride. They continue with their violence. And we see more and more what's going on in Jerusalem. And even after first, possibly a second captivity, the army comes in. They do not get right. And God says, I'm going to call even a more fierce people. Um, the worst of the heathen. And we know by Lamentations, they still don't get right. That's a sad case. That's a very sad case. How do you think God feels about his people doing it? And God ain't a meanie. God's just being a judge. A holy judge. He can't allow what's happening. And all they got to do is turn to God and say, we're sorry. We don't want to do it no more. We need your help not to do it no more. And we want to get right. And they don't. 